But I love, so he goes back in to apologize, and we just, we learned just exactly how fucking virginal these people are. They have a couch with bucket seats. Did you guys notice this? They just had two chairs pushed together with a blanket yep. over them because sitting next to each other was a little risque for their audience, I guess. Oh, that sad chair version of the Cialis tub yes. that they have as their fucking couch? Ooh. That was weird. You know how they have love seats? This is a hate seat. Yeah. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because that's what it says in this intro template. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, uh, you know what's a great movie? I have no idea. Savior, the 1998 <laughs> movie with Dennis Quaid. <laughs> it's pretty great. I watched that, and it turns out that's the wrong <laughs> movie, and now I have to watch this, and we have to talk about this instead, also called Savior. Dude, we'll get there in a no, second. No, <laughs> dude, I, I, I watched like 18 minutes of some weird-ass cartoon from that was made in Jerusalem before I was like, Eli's notes make no fucking oh. sense at all. Yeah, when, when the name of the movie... I watched that, too. Okay, all right. Well. <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoyed that, and then I was like, okay, no, it's the third thing. Great. Okay, I have two things that we're doing now. All right, and uh, who's to blame for this mix-up? Well, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Christmas tacular. Oh, yeah, Christmas. Christmas. Okay. Tacular. First of all, Christmas tacular. <laughs> Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, because we're recording this one in advance. This is pre Thanksgiving, right when every good Christmas tacular starts. <laughs> well, because we have a Thanksgiving tacular and a Hanukkah tacular this year. Usually we just have a Christmas tacular. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so Heath, good. tell us. Islamophobic. What, <laughs> what will we be breaking down today? We watched Savior from some other year that's not with Dennis Quaid, that's not about a guy whose family dies and then joins the. <laughs> French Foreign Legion to get revenge on Muslims, which was better than this. <laughs> um, that's an, it was a 1998 movie, too. I can't stress that. This pre-9-11. And they still, the level of bigotry and hate was just so strong. We, we need to watch it. It's All right. better than this. But we watched <laughs> Savior from, I don't know, kind of recently. What, what year was this? Like 2013, probably? Something like that. Based on the camera phone they used? Yeah, I would say 2013. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like peak... Pure flicks, David R. White type of movie. And 2013 Savior. Ah, it doesn't have David R. White, though. It's the story of the birth of Jesus Christ set in modern day England with the prime minister getting possessed by Satan, setting up Jim Crow laws for immigrants and trying to murder a baby. So it's a super responsible version of Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> and Eli... How bad was this movie? Well, if you ever wondered what it would be like if Jesus was born in modern times, but you do not want the story to change in any possible way <laughs> that isn't boring wordplay. Well, yeah. You will love this movie. <sighs> You'll, you'll tolerate it. Okay, so what... It's pretty great wordplay, if I know what you're talking about. I'm not yeah. sure I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, I, I do, because there's only the one. Right. That's just it's just the one. No, no, it never got clever in any other way. But yeah, we'll get that. It's word. I don't know if it's play. It's word, though. <laughs> it is word. It's Jehovah, actually. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. If this whole movie was just cue cards being dropped in front of us instead of the movie. Much be better. Movie. Lot better. Much better. movie. Any change would have been a change in the right direction. Yes. OK. So what caused you to lose more respect for the British? This movie or Boris Johnson? <laughs> yes. Well, they didn't elect this movie, so I'm going to go with Boris okay. Johnson. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything you want to? I'd like to have a vote of no confidence in this movie. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. But if we know the British, they'll just replace it with an even worse movie, right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> they'll be like, right. I'd like to... "We watched Theresa May yeah. <laughs> for an hour. Someone should. We just watched her." <laughs> All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. 
trying to figure out the modern version of stuff. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Because, again, this this is supposed to be a reimagining of that Bible story of the birth of Christ in modern day England. So it starts easy. We meet Joseph and they were like, okay, modern day carpenter. Wait, shit, that's just a carpenter. Yeah, that's right. easy. This is easy. This is an easy <laughs> job. This is going to be great. We got this. We're going to kill this movie. But they got super confused by everything else. Yeah. Um, we'll get to a bunch of the examples, but I'll give you one. My favorite example, they have to come up with the modern version of the three kings or the three wise men or three magi who mm -hmm. visit Jesus on the night he's born. <laughs> and they landed on a billionaire and two chicken farmers. <laughs> That's the translation they made. And British tall Tyler. Yes, Don't British tall Tyler it. is there as well. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, right. They, they they translated three to four because that was confusing <laughs> actually, also, number-wise. Actually, the farmers are a different thing. They translated three to two. They, they, they fucked this up in so many ways. Yes. Yeah. Also, tractor. I don't know. Somehow there was a tractor yes. instead of like a donkey, something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to give you one other quick example. They needed a modern version of Herod, the king yep. who mm -hmm. killed all the babies, and they landed on atheist prime minister of the UK. Yep. <laughs> prime minister Herod, guess, by the way, that's the guy. Yeah, I guess that's a good one. Yeah. So, OK, I was going to go with best worst virginity, right? Because this this story doesn't make sense if it's not, you know, the virgin birth. But like she lives with her boyfriend. They live together and they don't fuck. Do they have bunk beds? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people sleep in the same bed thinking they might have sex, but then they don't because it turns out it was a friendly thing that was happening. And then it's fun. A lot yeah. of people are liars. You talk about, you play Scrabble. Yeah, it's fun. Was I was going to go with best worst pun. Uh -huh. So the only thing that they didn't need to modernize about this entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Was following a star. Because you know how we used to have old light from celestial bodies and we still do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie, but let's just say they update the whole thing in a way that makes no fucking sense. <laughs> yes. What's a new star? A clover? A horseshoe? It's from Lucky Charm? <laughs> I don't know. TMZ. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got an <laughs> awful lot of staring forlornly to the left to get to. So we're going to keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the footage they could afford for Savior. Not that one, though. Or that one. No, that. Yeah, no, that one. But we're going to watch those ones, too. Apparently. Because we already did. Because you already did. Because we got tricked. <laughs> you got tricked. And that. And that. Yeah, get it. Get okay. it. Okay, you go. All right, my turn, my turn. And that! And hey, that! Hey, guys, guys, why are yeah. you beating up a water bottle? Oh, hey, Noah. Hey. Keith and I were just reading that plastic is, like, super bad for the environment, so we decided to fight back one water bottle at a time. Yeah! Oh, good one. Did you see that? He cried. Thank okay, you. Okay, guys, but guys, if you're concerned about water bottles, why not try liquid death? Um, is, is that a drug? Because we are down. We are no, in. No, sure. no. Liquid death is actually really good water that comes in a 100% recyclable aluminum can. Water in a can? Like like beer? Like a can I mean, of beer? Like It looks like a beer, but it's actually from the mountains, and it's rich with natural electrolytes and minerals. That does sound good. Mm. But liquid death is only available in a handful of stores, so you have to order it online. Just go to liquiddeath.com slash awful. They're offering listeners an exclusive deal to get $2 off of every case. That's liquiddeath.com slash awful. Or better yet, you can click the option to literally sell your soul on their website in exchange for a free case. What? Yes, you can actually sign a real soul contract that is legally binding for eternity. I can get behind that, too. That sounds great. Right? I'm in. All right. Now, how about let me have a go at that bottle? But, uh... What about liquid death? Yeah, you said that was better. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you should still order it. It's just that I'm quitting smoking and I want to kick something all the time. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah, go for it. And that. And that. And that. <laughs> Oi, Henry. Well, you won't. I told you, Carol's working on a movie, isn't it? What's it about them? What's that matter? Oh, Mr. H. Oi. Oi. Da. Are Oi. you in Carol's movie, then? Suppose. Suppose. 
Well, I'm playing her boyfriend because I'm her boyfriend. Right. Right. Well, that's suit. I'm playing a Herod bloke. The one who tries to kill the fucking baby Jesus, then. Oi, right. watch your mouth. But yeah. It's going to be a ruddy joke, then, isn't it? Or oh, Carol done rented her best camera for this. Yeah, but has she changed the story at all? Or is it just a ruddy story of the Bama baby Jesus rumping down the scram shoe? Did you? It just doesn't need to be never mind the buzzcocks. It's, it's the baby Jesus story, isn't it? Oh, okay. That the last one was definitely not real. No, actually, that's that's a real show in England. My, mine was the one that was fake. Damn it. Is it about dildos? Never mind the buzzcocks? It is it's not vibrators. about dildos. Well, it should be about dildos. It should be about dildos. I'd watch it either way. And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to fuck this up pretty early. If there's one thing you'd think a Christian movie would nail, it would be the opening line from the Bible. <laughs> but no, they get they get in the beginning right, though. But after that, they kind of fucked it up. Yeah, we make it two sentences in and we were telling the creation story wrong. This is also the moment where all the viewers realize that this is not going to be the high, posh London accent we were hoping for from a British short film. <laughs> this is going to be whoever gave Marsh wedgies in elementary school's <laughs> version of a Christian movie. Wait, does Marsh not have a London? There's a different accent in London than what Marsh has. Marsh yeah, he's a, he has accent. a Liverpool accent. Yeah, he's got. He's from the north. Yeah. Those are um, different things. Can you tell them apart? Yeah, there's like yeah, there's, there's like fifty different. British accents that I can tell apart. I just wait, don't know wait, what any of them More are. importantly, can you not tell them yeah, apart? Right? No. <laughs> like you hear all of our British friends talk and you're just like, yep, British. from England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, all right. those people plus Australia, same. <laughs> yep. All right. There we go. All right. So, yeah. So we, we break in and the movie starts uh, like there's a pompous British lady telling us about the fall of man over shots of like, you know, whatever. Just if you Google Earth video. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just at, at this point, I wrote in my notes, you could just buy stock footage, guys. This movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we learn all about that apple. They weren't supposed to eat the little bastards ate it anyway. But hey, don't fret because eventually Jesus. Right. Yeah. The, and it's very judgy about women, despite them getting the thing wrong at the beginning. They said God created man and woman to rule together. Yeah. And the two of them side by side. Somebody should tell the Bible and Christianity <laughs> about that if that's what God said. Did God say that? Yeah, They're renegotiating right, right. the contract for a help meet. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently God's scribe was an angry incel, so that's what we got with Christianity. <laughs> but then they're telling this story, and it's like super judgy, just like, you know, Eve obviously fucked it up. What's, what's Eve doing? She, oh, she's hanging out by the tree of knowledge. Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you the one rule, you know. Yeah. Don't eat, don't eat from that tree. And Adam's like, should I tell her or <laughs> Eve walks back? Tell me what you're being weird. Apple. <laughs> and so here's the problem with spending the big bucks on your stock footage up front is that all of that's like these nature documentary shots that were shot with really, really nice cameras and super slow motion and shit. You get the hummingbird flapping its wing. And then we cut immediately from that to the actual movie, which is, you know, the best they could do with that flip phone. Yep. I wrote, oh, cool. They got Michael J. Fox to be the cameraman for the rest of the movie. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Did Nobody ever looked over and was like, okay, well, that guy is just trembling. <laughs> He's he so <laughs> Having a fit? <laughs> we should get an exorcist and then do the movie. Yeah, like maybe we get him some heroin before the shot, right? Like before <laughs> the shot, we do the. Yeah, but we meet Mary. Uh, she is a waitress. Who's about to get her hours cut, damn it. Okay. And look, I'm sure whoever this gentleman who plays the boss at the restaurant is a lovely person, but he looks so creepy that I was, I thought this was going to be like a rapey boss scene. It's not. He's just there to tell her her hours are cut. But because his mustache is made of exactly three hairs, I was like, Mary, inch towards the knives while you can, my girl. Inch towards the knives while you can. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't help that he goes and stares at the wall of knives on the magnet thing for a while yeah. and then like licks a couple of them. And then he's like, hey, Mary, can I talk to you about uh, something? 
apropos of nothing related to me licking those knives just now. That yeah, was, right, right. Did you see me do that? Never mind. Nothing. What? Yeah, and I will say this is the first time we really step away from the original story. I was glad they did this. They updated her age in this one. She's not 14. So that's going to make it a little so, less uncomfortable when she's right. raped by God. So much better. Yeah, but she got her hours cut at the restaurant. Yeah. And I wanted so badly for us to watch a server get fired and get a full restaurant flame out because those are the greatest. Have you ever seen a restaurant flame out in person or like planned one yourself? I was going to say, I've seen one from the first person perspective. I was yes, say, I've Why been you- one, but I haven't gotten to be the third person. I feel like it's more fun from the third person. Oh, do you guys have good ones? Do you just like shit on a table while you were locking eyes with the person who just tipped badly or like what'd you do? I was going to say, if you thought it was uh, if you thought it was more fun for the people watching, you are you didn't do it right. Yeah. uh... (laughs) I continued to make drinks the way I made drinks the entire time I was employed. And that was vengeance enough. (laughs) That was by throwing an unopened bottle of tequila at the table. Here, figure it out here. (laughs) I don't do roll ups. Bye. You need a do you you really need a guy for unscrew? Come on. I ordered a mojito. Here's the thing of mint. Here's a head of cabbage. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking figure it out. All right. So yeah, but she tells him like, oh, but me and Joe are saving up to be married. I can't have my hours cut. Like this is the big conflict that they're starting off with. And he's like, yeah. Well, sorry. They just gave me the one line, so I can either say that again or. Or I can leave. Well, and that's what's so wonderful about this movie being remade in modern Britain, right? Is that all of the stakes from the baby Jesus story are gone, right? So yeah. what she will be like working with, for money for and what she won't be able to afford in this movie is a nice wedding. Yeah. Right? Because she's got the British support system for having a baby and she's got universal health care for the hospital bills. So she's like, oh, Joseph, we're going to have to have like... I don't know, take out instead of a caterer. God, this movie yeah. sucks if you're setting it in Britain. <laughs> we could get Chick-fil-A and they're gone. No, yeah, they can't, they can't yeah. even get, damn it. Yeah, so that that's the opening of the fucking movie. And now we meet Joey the carpenter. We know he's a carpenter because there's a hammer hanging off of the side of him. Which he will <laughs> whip out of its holster and then put away slowly. 430 times throughout this movie. There will never be a moment where he doesn't idly remove and then put back the hammer in this entire film. But yeah, we the way that we see that they're, you know, suffering financially is we see him miming to a flower guy, what can I get for one pound and 50 cents? Yeah. To which the flower guy appropriately responds, here, have some grass this isn't how flower shops work. <laughs> <laughs> you can have this flaccid asparagus from my lunch <laughs> left over, I guess. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't want those. I feel like you wouldn't. You just wouldn't buy the flaccid asparagus, but he does. He gets his he gets his pound fifty worth. I guess he sure does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we cut to okay. A full thirty percent of this film will be women sitting in chairs waiting for the scene to start. Oh, and how they will wait. It's been a while since we've had Christians waiting for the scene to start space work, and I missed it. Right? I <laughs> This actress, her, hand, she, her hands are like raising on their own, and she's forcibly lowering them. <laughs> she's starting to do shadow puppets with herself in the seven seconds she has to wait before her scripted lines come in. It's incredible. Don't do a Heil. Don't do a Heil. Don't I'm do saying a that out loud. I'm saying <laughs> Heil out loud. I'm saying it again. Out loud. How many times did I say Heil? Heil. Start the scene. <laughs> yeah, so she's sitting around awful upset about her hours getting cut. But then Joey shows up and he's got his shitty flowers for her. Right? <laughs> got you some asparagus. There's a little bit of hollandaise still on it. I don't know. Is that good or bad? I like hollandaise. I feel like it makes it. Did you know it's hollandaise, not holidays? <laughs> <laughs> Learned that today. Crazy. Gary Gullman. What's that? A job <laughs> at the job place? Okay, goodbye. Yeah. What well, yeah, right, right. He gets home. What fucking time of day is it, right? She just got off from waiting tables. He's getting home from God only knows what and getting a call about a job that starts that day. Okay. Sure, that's how universes work. Whatever. I love how that phone call happens too. He's like 
oh, we're poor now because you got your hours cut. We were already kind of poor. But don't worry. Something's going to happen any minute. Like, God's going to provide. I said something <laughs> will happen. And and then this phone call. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, God, really man. late on the queue. <laughs> oh, so much shadow puppets. Okay. Yeah. But again, like, that means that on the other end, someone was like, hey, Joseph, um, come on back down to the carpentry Firm. place. <laughs> I've got some more wood for you to <laughs> yes. cut. Yes. And he says, yes, I have my tools, which right. means the other guy was like, uh, you're still a carpenter with tools, right? Do you have them? Because <laughs> otherwise I can't offer you this. Do you have a hammer on your belt right now? I do. I do. No, it's good. I do. I'll be back with my hammer belt. But, but what he says is, yes, I have my tools. So you have to assume the other guy was on the other side of the line going like, so yes, you could have just used yes in that place. I don't you. I only asked you the one now. question. <laughs> yes, the job now. Are you are you doing the copy? Are you expositing? <laughs> <laughs> are you in a movie on the other side of the phone? What's happening? You have to tell me, Joseph. <laughs> All right. So now we cut to we get to watch her do dishes for an extended period of time while she hears the soundtrack. I mean, what is she keeps turning around like she heard something? It's like you know, we didn't. Other than the music, <laughs> see. I like this because this is a good take. Holy Spirit as horror movie sneaking up on Mary the Virgin. I liked this take. <laughs> I could do a whole movie with this thing where she's running from him, trying to start the car. It's like it follows, <laughs> but with insemination of the savior instead of death. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how you get out of it? You fuck somebody. It's the same as it follows. I'm telling it's you. Very yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, very similar. It's a fucked up story in the Bible because it is a horror movie. But uh -huh. they pretend they're it, we're told like, no, that's the kids are told like, no, this is the Bible. This isn't a horror movie. But an angel shows up to this virginal 14 year old and is like, hello, I'm not going to sexually assault you. And she's like, what? That's that's a weird first thing to say. <laughs> so you're, you're not. OK. Um, do you have a follow up? And he does. He's like, okay, yeah, well, you know, that being said, my boss is going to sexually assault <laughs> Yeah, right. My, yes. My boss, that's the rest of my announcement. My boss is God, by the way, the God of the universe. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, right. No, they keep showing us, like, lens flare and, and, and bright lights and shit. And it's like, yeah, but we're watching angel rape right now is what we're watching, right? We know what's going on here. And more importantly, this is not well done lens flare, right? This no. is for... I wish I could say stoned British 20 somethings going. Now, how did I make the lens go foof foof then, do they? <laughs> All right. I got a flashlight. <laughs> we got that window and we got Steve's face. We rumble them about and we'll get a lens flare. We will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they're like, you, uh, the angel is like, Mary, you are with child. And she says, no, no, no. I'm the virgin, Mary. I think you want a different Mary. And they're like, no, no. Wait, hold on. You're living with your boyfriend and you guys aren't. Wait, wait. Look, I thought this was set in the modern day. I was just going to say this movie's <laughs> supposed to be set in modern times. Now you're making this story bullshit. <laughs> I'm an angel here to inseminate you with the Messiah and I don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard myself say that, though. I have a weird job, don't I? Now that I think about it. I announce sex crimes. That's my yeah, job. Right, right. <laughs> this sucks. I just have to do this one, though. Otherwise, I'd need like a lozenge. <laughs> you guys rape a lot is what I'm saying. All right, bye. I'm going to lens fair out of here. Yeah, right, right. We just watch him go to a bunch of his other jobs, trying to announce it to different Marys that are like, no. <laughs> no. Also, when she gets conceived, it like... Hits her in the very clearly in the stomach. Yeah. Right. She does like a, oh, conceived right in the womb. Yeah. <laughs> it was right away. It was like he just told me about it and then it, it hurt because I found out. Yeah. Like a second after she finds out about this, she's got full blown pregnancy eggs. Eli's got to go get all the food now. Mm hmm. So she she goes and grabs one of those handy dandy pregnancy tests that virgins keep on hand. Well, you know, you want to be prepared when the big day comes along. <laughs> because you're a liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she looks at it and it's like, all right, so it's there's plus and minus on the 
What's hold on? What's hovering in a column of light mean? <laughs> what's the answer? Oh yeah, God's baby. Okay, he was he was telling the truth. God damn it! Right again. So this actress's performance is supposed to be realizing she's pregnant and then filled with joy, but what she does is totally dead face and then creepy smile that doesn't reach her eyes. So it's like she made it to the bathroom in time to fart at an office party. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my notes. Maybe she's smiling because abortion's covered by the NHS. Yeah, I'm not right, really sure right. what I'm supposed yeah, to be following exactly. in this movie. <laughs> but yeah, so but she's pregnant, and man, she just can't wait to tell Joe. Oh fuck! Oh, oh yeah. All I'll right. put his asparagus in a vase. That'll make this easier. Yeah, that. <laughs> Wouldn't you just have sex with him right now and then be pregnant? Oh, like, that would be oh. so much easier. Ooh, smart. Yeah, but no, no, they didn't think of that. So, yeah. So late that night, Joe comes home. She's sitting at the table. And just to un underscore how little they understand about how anything related to work works in this movie. He comes in. He sets the thing down or whatever. And he goes like, yeah, it was a great day at work. I got paid extra. No, you fucking didn't. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> My boss was like, you know what? I'm going to trickle down some of this. Yeah. Problem, man. <laughs> There you go. No, at the end of the day, this today we all span a wheel to see how much we got yeah, paid. Right. It was fun. What the fuck are you <laughs> I got paid extra. <laughs> also, they do not know a carpentry word besides carpentry. Yeah, no. So they have to just be like money double <laughs> tool. Are we tool. We need tool. Tool belt. We said yeah, that earlier. Right. Oh, but we're out. Okay. We're out. <laughs> Because you can see the actor panic, right? She she obviously improvised how was work today, and he was like, oh, you can do this. Come on, man. Year and a half of community college. Work. Yes, and work. Wood. Michael Scarn. Fuck. Oh. So. Wooden. Did you say wooden? Work was wooden? Wood. <laughs> So Joey goes like, uh, you know, hey, are you still bummed? Don't worry about losing your hours. God will provide. And Mary's like, funny you mention that. Yeah, I wrote, <laughs> yeah, about God providing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Get you more hours at TGI Fridays. He's a loving God. Fuck off. Yeah, right. Exactly. And let's credit where credit's due. This modern Mary breaks. I was inseminated by an angel. And I have an angel standing by to convince you of this in the worst way possible. Right. Right. She doesn't go, hey, you know how God and the savior and the blah. She's just like, yo, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe add a little more information for your celibate boyfriend who you live with. <laughs> Don't just go right to that. Well, yeah. especially with this fucking idiot, because she says that he's like, but we haven't had sex. And he stands there doing the math. Right for a minute and a half before he realizes that other men also produce semen. We watch him do the math in his head. Wait, wait. Now, if my penis hasn't been in you, we might as well see yeah, the chalk drawings fly in front of his yes. eyes, but they're just <laughs> all of other guys' dicks. <laughs> when Nona Ryder walks in, he does some math with her as they look around. <laughs> did you fuck a ghost from heaven? That's where we both landed. I did. I did. Yeah, so he's like, he's pissed off now that he gets it. And she's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Hear me out. An angel showed up after you left, which, you know, normally on these circumstances would just mean whatever the fucking UPS guy was hot, right? But that's what she says. He wanders off to go kill himself or something. And then the angel, he's like sitting on the back porch. The angel shows up to say, hey, no, no, she's, she's, she's being straight with you there. And I'm like, really immediately would have been the time, angel. <laughs> I wanted to see the angel like panting, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was late. Was there like a solid 11 minutes where a teenager just told you that she was very clearly <laughs> pregnant? Oh, I feel like I wrecked this moment for you because the you savior be... of the universe is here. But now it was really just oh. about you getting cheated on. Oh, sorry. I'm man. sorry. You, you would water? be amazed how hard it is to find a fucking Chick-fil-A around this country. I saw, <laughs> but I did. Whew. Yeah, I got here, though. Yeah. Did you not get my email? Because I'm pretty sure I sent an email <laughs> yesterday. Oh, it's crazy. Ways, man. It's the ways. It tells you it, the average, but it not. <laughs> was there traffic on the sidewalk? There's That's God tra happened. traffic because there's a lot of Jewish Fine. babies today. A lot. 
Is it Jewish? Mm. Yeah, big ones. They get in there. Mm. Okay. It's a whole thing. We need immigration reform. Congratulations! You're the father of Samuel <laughs> Ufer. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, but can that actor please go put on a clean fucking shirt? It's right? the I, best! It's a lot of cum. A lot of cum on that shirt. <laughs> A lot of cum. Understandable. A lot of Worcestershire sauce. It's yeah. really, it's every stain tells a story and every story <laughs> is tragic. Yes. <laughs> but I love, so he goes back in to apologize and we just, we learned just exactly how fucking virginal these people are. They have a couch with bucket seats. Did you guys notice this? They just had two chairs pushed together with a blanket yep. over them because sitting next to each other was a little risque for their audience, I guess. Oh, that sad chair version of the Cialis tub yes. that they have as their fucking couch? <laughs> mm -hmm. That was weird. You know how they have love seats? This is a hate seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the this is like the bunk beds for celibate couples of love seats. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> Although I gotta say, that's like the best Cialis commercial ever. That's good stuff. <laughs> if you don't make it out of IKEA without having a fight, that's the chair you have to buy. It's a whole yeah, thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like God sinks a putt and looks over at the Virgin Mary, and he's like, "Ha ha, Cialis!" And then, yeah, I mean, Jesus, the, the Savior, the Messiah. Because of your pills. <laughs> Forhims.com. So they're supposed to be in the tubs, but God is standing on the water in his. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, my balls are getting cold. <laughs> so. I mean, you can just go in if you want, right? And then do, you, you showed me the trick. I get it. I see the trick. <laughs> All right. So now she gets a note. Like sometime later, she gets a note. Hey, it's Joe. Meet me out in the woods where the next scene is and everything. She gets out there, and Joe has decided to throw her a surprise wedding. Yep. Because, you know, chicks dig it when you just kind of wing the whole wedding thing, right? Yep. They love it when you skip over their wedding. A huge hit. A huge <laughs> hit. Because, let's keep in mind, the stakes of this movie so far, in so much as there are stakes, have been, we won't be able to afford our nice wedding. To which this movie responds, fine, let's not have one. Yeah, right. Done. We'll have a shitty one. <laughs> Now there's no stakes. We did it. We solved oh. your movie puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted her to say no at this point. She gets out <laughs> to this grove and he's got the whole thing set up. And there's like elves and saying he's she's just like mm, no. Mm. No. Was the not having sex with you thing not a hint that I this wasn't that was super duper clear <laughs> long term? I keep leaving printouts of Craigslist roommate situations on your desk. I just figured. <laughs> and then I just Love immediately fucked God when he asked. Clothed time with me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go meet Heath Enright in New York City. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're treated to a damn near subliminal shot of newspapers being printed. <laughs> okay. Okay. That was in the movie? I'm not crazy? Yeah, no, yeah. That, that 13 frames of a goddamn newspaper printer, yeah, that was in was the movie. Super loud and, like, nightmare-y. <laughs> it was just, like, <laughs> rest of the movie gone. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what is this? My, and, I'm looking around like I was trying to figure out all the digits of pie and there's ants <laughs> crawling on me. <laughs> well, what's amazing is... You can absolutely tell what happened with this, right? Is that someone bought the stock footage of newspapers being made, which is, I don't know, a minute and a half. So they put that, they drag and dropped that into final cut, whatever. <laughs> and they were like, well, that's too long. <laughs> so it's not a minute and a half. How long? Uh, an eighth of a second, but at three yes. times the volume. Eighth of a second, three times the volume. That's why you're the director. <laughs> Slash star slash writer. Night. By the way, if you're wondering what it's doing there, it's because in the next scene, there will be a newspaper and people might wonder where it came from. <laughs> oh, they brought it in? Did they? It's set in modern times, you see. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, because the whole next thing is about this chick being in the tabloids, right? Because then we get the scene where we meet the celebrity. And we just, by the way, she is just a celebrity. We don't know if she's an actor or a musician or what the fuck she does, but... She's a celebrity, and she was in the tabloids for being out on the town drinking again. And watching Christians try to do 
what celebrities get in trouble for <laughs> without mentioning any of the things that make them tingle in their downstairs is the fucking best. <laughs> like, oh, did you hear the latest gossip, dearie? Oh, it was all over the news that you were on the bicycle. <laughs> Done. And bicycle. You were on the bicycle. Nailed it. We're making a movie. <laughs> Also, I want to talk about Assistant Grandma. <laughs> yes. Assistant Grandma will deliver. She is my favorite character in the movie, by the way, by far. <laughs> and she will deliver 100% of her lines to the person in the scene with her, but checking in with the camera to make sure she got them right. <laughs> yes. Every time there's a <laughs> punctuation mark. Give her the rolling finger motion. Every Yes, you're doing <laughs> fine, Grants. <laughs> and then I stop talking because they're going to make it into a movie, dear. <laughs> Exit. Exit. No, you daft bitch. Get off the stage. <laughs> no, stop reading. Stop reading. Middle finger. <laughs> Yeah, so she's looking over this tabloid about her being out drinking on the town. Uh, but while she's looking through it, she sees the story of a pregnant girl that claims to be a virgin. And I'm like, how does that make it into the newspaper? Who, who's your fact checker? T.I. the rapper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she reads this. and She's like, yeah, wow. OK, why well, I tried to run that same play when I got pregnant. This lady pulled it off, though. Nice work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> And then she calls old grandma back in and she's like, hey, what's that? Oh, there's like a there's like a prophecy from some book like I don't know, like a the Bible. I forget what it was called. Yeah. It's like <laughs> a Jesus Christ being born. I feel like that was the name. It was something like that. Do you remember that? And of course she does. Yeah. Prophecy in this movie is like, who's that guy? He's in the good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah, right. but then he's in a bunch of comedies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean Isaiah? No. Isaiah, no. yes. Isaiah. Is it Isaiah? Okay. Oh, that was going to bother me all week. Thank yeah, you. Right. I was going to have to look it up on IBBB. <laughs> <laughs> Bible base? Yeah, Bata the Bible, Bible base. Bata base. Yeah, Bata ba base. Why would it be Bata? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, one other line in this scene, uh, the actress, she says, the weird, it was the weirdest words. She said exact words. Paparazzi are like pigeons. They don't care if they poo on people. Yep. What? Okay, first of all, I feel like pigeons care, right? Don't, I mean, <laughs> They're doing it on purpose, yeah. I feel mean, yeah. like they would care. They'd be happy or sad or something. They would have some emotional reaction to it. But what the fuck is happening in your life that paparazzi is pooing on you not emotionally. I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> and what is it up with, with your life where you're being constantly shit on by pigeons, right? Like, I've never been shit on by a pigeon. I lived in New York City for years. I've been shit on <laughs> by pigeons so many times. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's it. then. <laughs> Either side of that metaphor is crazy. <laughs> yep, yes, absolutely. Whichever was really happening in her life is nuts. <laughs> but yes, listener, in case you haven't quite gotten it yet, this is going to be the star... That everyone follows. Oh, you're, you're going to just spoil it. that now, huh? I am. Spoil it early. As opposed to 50 minutes from now when I got it. <laughs> was it the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth time the movie explicitly <laughs> said it? It was the fifth, as you'll see oh, from okay. my notes, where I'm like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut to them watching the news, and they're declaring a britain wide census where everyone has to go to their hometown, which is weird as that seems is item three on Boris Johnson's get ready for Brexit website. If you check that one right after changing your passport out, I was going to say still a better idea than <laughs> Brexit. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Christian movie about Jesus being born is more responsible than Brexit politically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Well, That's and real. also I find it interesting because you can tell how much earlier this movie was made because they they were making you know, Prime Minister Herod hate on immigrants, which they would not do if they made it like this same group of people would be like, "Ooh, we hate immigrants, too. Now we're going to lose Ooh, a lot of audience. Right. <sighs> but again, hating immigrants more responsibly than Brexit. He's like, hey, yeah. too many immigrants. <laughs> we're definitely staying in the EU, but everyone yeah. registered to vote. <laughs> right. 
Also, they try to throw in some atheism shade here for Herod, the like atheist prime minister, but they don't do it smoothly. He's just like, also, um, FYI, fuck God. Yeah. Not sure what that has to do with what, I, <laughs> what I'm announcing, but I just like to throw out a nice little fuck God reminder. Um, prime minister out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh. But yeah, and I, I love it. I'm, I'm trying to think through the logistics of that, right? If I had to go back to my hometown, wherever the fuck that is, for a uh, for a census, and then I'm thinking to myself, wow, as bad as it is now, it would be so much more insane in the Bronze Age to try to do that. So, <laughs> God, how do they keep telling this story? Though, to be fair, being forced to go home to take a barbaric census to stop the savior from rising makes about as much sense as a 10-year high school reunion. So I get it. I'm okay, saying yeah. I get it. <laughs> no, you're good. You're right. <laughs> so, okay, but unfortunately, this trip back to the hometown, now that they're married, she has to go to his hometown for the census, is that it's going to come exactly when she's due, right? And mm -hmm. they don't even have a car to drive. He's got a Vespa, though. Don't worry. I love that they bring that up. She's, he's like, well, we can go on my Vespa. And she's like, I'll be nine months pregnant. He says, I'm sure we'll work something out. And then later, it's just them on the fucking Vespa. Yep. <laughs> You could stand on the pegs. They're pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> pretty awesome. That's why we don't allow these in any other continent except for Europe and the UK. <laughs> Actually, not street legal. I souped it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a night. Put a little turbo on it. It's got a NOS button. <laughs> oh, I miss movies when NOS was saying. You guys remember NOS? Yeah. Saw yeah. It, saw it in Sharknado. Can we just watch, can we stop and watch Fast and the Furious 9 or whatever they're on? I don't know. No. Let's put it in there. No. I think it would be Are they Hob on 9 yet? I think Hobbs and Shaw would be the most recent. Um, yeah. Oh, we got to watch Hobbs and Shaw. I wrote that down the other day. It's pretty I good. Watch Hobbs I, and I Shaw. saw in there, so it was pretty great. Yeah. All right. So then we violently cut to a talk show, right? Yes. It just suddenly and, 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 and uh, without warning, we're being treated to this dude interviewing the paparazzi victim that we met earlier her name is ruby graceland jesus <laughs> starfalho stupid <laughs> wait messiah miracle face <laughs> ruby graceland that good yeah. that's the most name like one i came up with and yep. i said i'd only do three we did it <laughs> I, I gotta say, I was so distracted because this actor looks an incredibly a lot like a girl that I dated in high school who was super uber Christian. If this movie had been made earlier, I would have double checked to make sure it wasn't her. So that was wildly distracting. See, I said, this is a really depressing premiere of Be Reasonable, the television show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're making fun of her for being religious because this is an atheist time. I'm sitting at home trying to figure out if the aspect ratio is fucked up or if every actor in this movie is just long. I honestly still don't know. No, everyone's one eighth gecko who participated <laughs> in this film. I had similar questions. Right. And again, like this movie is trying to do the tongue in cheek thing, but then it keeps pulling back because it realizes that it's still making fun of the Bible story. Right. So it'll be like, <laughs> yeah. she believes in a virgin birth. Have you ever heard of where babies come from? And then she'll be like, actually, that's a real thing. And he'll be like, yes, it is. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> what is this scene for? <laughs> also, we get the classic Christian movie trope. Aren't you worried that being religious is going to destroy your career? Yeah. A worry uh -huh. only had by Christian movies inside Christian movies. Well, because it's because it's so relevant to people who are, you know, in Christian movies, right? Like, because they're like, yeah, this is right. Like, you mean this movie? Because this is going to fuck it right up. Yes. Yes. God. Being in this film. After watching Cliff lose that part of the big group of fish in Finding Dory, I just, I don't know if I can risk it in this high, <laughs> high end game, religion and movies. Uh, David A.R. White's worth like $10 million. Oh, fuck. By the way, I'm pretty sure the guy playing the dude interviewing her made a bet with somebody about how many different directions that he could look during his three minutes on, on screen. Oh, and he nailed it. Yes, that he did. 
And right at the end of this scene, he turns to the camera and he goes, well, I guess if you want to find a savior, you'll just have to follow this star. Get it? <laughs> Wink. And that's where I got it, by the way. You can see in my notes, I go, oh, my gosh, she's the star. This is Yeah, excellent. that's where I got it. That's where I got it. <laughs> but then they th said star, star, Bible, star, Bible, wink, star. Yeah. Oh, got it. Well, okay. let me warn you, this movie is not about to get any more clever. So we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Axe the hard sell here. Did you catch how they use star to mean both a fixed luminous point in the night sky and principal performer? Do you get it? Star! You get it? Star. Are you sure you don't need them to point it out several more times? Well, tough shit, because they're gonna, and we're gonna do all of that and more when we return for the tedious conclusion of Savior. Joseph, I need to tell you something. What is it? I'm pregnant. Oh, you, you cheated on me? So you cheated on me. What? No, I would never. Okay, but you just said you're pregnant. I so. am pregnant. So you... Okay. Okay, so you went and got IVF? No. Joseph? Um... I want to have your baby. So... You... You fucked me while I was asleep? Joseph! Because we could do it while I was awake. Like, I'll do it awake. Oh, never mind. Uh, yes, Prime Minister, you wanted to see me? There he is! Tyler, right? Yes, yes, on loan from America. I got to tell you, sir, I am excited about this exchange program. I think that you're going to find... Right then, right then, I want a census. You want a what? A census. Too many oh. immigrants. I want them all to go home and answer a census. All to go home? You already have a census. If they all went home, that would throw the country into chaos. We have no means or no plan to handle it. There's no way that it's going to make it past the courts. I'm the prime minister now. Me. Wait. Wait, it changed mid-sentence? Yes, except it's me now, you see. So how about this sentence? You know, I still like it better here. Well, you should. It's your turn to be prime minister. And we're back for more of this shit. And at this point in the movie, they felt the need to demonstrate that this whole, like, virgin shall conceive and bear a son thing is the talk of the town. Uh, so we cut to this guy with the weirdest possible British accent sitting in what seems to be a giant empty space laundromat telling <laughs> no one in he's looking at a newspaper talking to no one in particular telling nobody how this virgin's baby is the talk of the town. Right. And and he went to the Christopher <laughs> Eggleston School of Dictation. So he's like, oh, they've done rumpled up the newspaper. They have with the half no have no faffle. Oh, my God. <laughs> It was like a it was like a bit in the Guy Ritchie movie. I had no idea what the fuck this guy was talking about. Brad Pitt <laughs> runs in and beats the shit out of him. Yeah. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> it's Fermi <really> Mad. <laughs> All right, so we cut from him to uh, Ruby Graceland's office. Well, uh, fenced in area. Her fenced in area. <laughs> playpen? Playpen? Do we want to go with playpen? <laughs> Her dumpster area behind a ski lodge. It was confusing. <laughs> Her timeshare in Twin Peaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but there's a billionaire on the phone for her. He will alternately be a billionaire and a millionaire as we go through this movie. So he's got some he's got his stocks in some volatile shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's being audited by the IRS, so he can't tell us exactly. Oh, right, how well, much right. Yeah, exactly. Because you're let not us allowed know. to count your money while you're being after audited. the That's election. Illegal. Yeah, exactly. But John Dalton, the billionaire, also believes the savior is soon to be born and wants to give a whole bunch of money to Joe and Mary. Right. That's the modern equivalent of gold, frankincense and myrrh, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really wanted there to be a myrrh and frankincense billionaire, yes! too. Yes, separately. exactly. <laughs> so just like, here's a billion dollars worth of gold. Here's. Two billion dollars worth of resin. Because <laughs> myrrh and frankincense are basically the same thing, and it's weird that we say it like that. Okay. It's are a you, lot. Are you, do you want to make a candle? How about yeah. all the Eight candles? Billion <laughs> yeah, candles. <right. laughs> I got you this candle factory. And, and by the way, in case you didn't catch it the first time, John Dalton says to you on the phone, he says, I just feel like I'll find the savior by following your star. Get it? Wink. 
He was like, oh, you're the star, and then I'll just the follow star. you. You I said, goodbye this today. Star, even though I was talking to you, <laughs> I meant follow you. I'm a billionaire. You. This is what I did today. Billionaire. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so then, oh, by the way, apparently there's been some budget cuts in the UK set offices and shit. Their government is, is on a shoestring in these days, which is why the PM's office has been moved to the back of a dentist's office. Right. He's, <laughs> he's in a cubicle inside the fenced in area, yeah. inside the dumpster area. I was going to say, not a nice dentist's lodge. office. No, 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 exactly. It's over top of a laundromat. Yeah. <laughs> So they try to do this moment where it's like that where he walks in and the boss throws the newspaper at him. But there were obviously 12 takes where they just tried throwing a flippy floppy newspaper at the guy <laughs> where it flew everywhere and they had to pick up all the pages. So they yes. balled it into a yep. giant wad and he chucks it at him and it hits his chest and then instantly refolds itself between cuts. Oh, <laughs> absolutely like an hour of Tim Tebow trying to throw a newspaper as best he can. So yeah. I was trying to figure out, was it that the guy playing the PM was unable to throw it, or was it that the tall Tyler guy was screaming and running every time he did? But yes, there were clearly multiple takes. Also, the PM was fucking that newspaper right before the guy walked in. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, that the, his reaction makes a lot more sense now then. Okay. And basically his thing is that, like, after years of atheism having dominance, this virgin birth is now more popular than the prime minister. And I wrote in my notes, to be fair, an unborn child is more popular than the prime minister right now. Yeah, and pretty it's much all the time, <laughs> actually. Yeah. I mean, Boris Johnson does look like a really old fetus, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, I like get it. Gary Busey's fetus. Mm, yeah. Yeah, but it's assisted that this is British tall Tyler. He's like, well, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing that the savior is going to be born. So Prime Minister Harrod's like, get out of my fucking office. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> and then we cut to Ruby Graceland in bed while waiting for the scene to start, I guess. OK, my notes literally just say, did did they just accidentally leave in the footage they took of this woman asleep? <laughs> <laughs> oh, on purpose, but yes. Yeah, yep. right. All my notes are on this scene involved me slowly realizing that that clock was set to British date style. It is not the 11th day of the 13th month at this point in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a minute. Sorry, guys. Uh, I really wanted her to have a dream about Muhammad at this point. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, uh, I'm doing another new press movie. Conference. New, new movie. prophecy. <laughs> uh, Change of plans. Ready, guys? Buckle in. Pretty big switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out my Easy baby's going right. to be swapped out at the last second. I know, right? But yeah, so. <laughs> you guys like twists, right? I'm not Shyamalan. This is going to be fun. <laughs> we get Dennis Quaid in on this movie. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, but so then she's, she's dreaming or having some like echoey flashbacks with random lines. Uh, from earlier in the movie, but interspersed with them are also some lines that aren't from the movie and are completely random. Like, you know, would you like fries with that level of shit? <laughs> I'm telling you, John, you've got to get a tripod for that camera. camera, camera. <laughs> <laughs> Rhubarb and spinach. You had a dream about somebody <laughs> talking about rhubarb and spinach. All right, so now Prime Minister Herod is drinking booze and hanging out in his decidedly middle-class living room. <laughs> Eventually, he turns on the news, yeah. right? He watches TV in the movie. He watches. <laughs> <laughs> and he very clearly has one of those two sad Cialis chairs, but just one by itself now. It's clearly yep. one of the same ones, <laughs> which is... I mean, a Cialis like masturbation tub is also a good Cialis commercial. Yeah. Now. Ooh, yeah. there's the untapped market that Hims and Cialis aren't going for. Right. Just a, a really stiff jerk session. You want to have really good performance for yourself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the news says that the millionaire John Dalton, the Marcus down, the millionaire John Dalton has also signed on to this whole savior coming thing. Also, so has the prime minister's assistant, Tall Tyler. And the oh, newscaster Tyler. is like, boy, we sure hope the prime minister doesn't hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, during this newscast, there's what's supposed to be like the terrifying news ticker going under with the text scrolling across. And I actually read these. First, it says, Irish leaders argue over relevance of religious law. And then it says, antidepressants become most prescribed drug in Europe. Mm -mm. Then it says, popular chat show host in lawsuit following radical false claims. Oh, right. Interesting. Supposed to be about... Mike Marshall's TV show. <laughs> and then the, the last one, it just says Jewish. And I was like, oh, man, what's it going to say? And they cut. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I bet they fucking did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was what definitely, it, it had the letter L, too. So it was like, I'm pretty sure going to be like Jewish lizard alien. No, no, no. We're going to get in yeah. trouble. There, Eli violated the whiteboard. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> David and, Icke, you're not a producer. You have to leave. And by the way, the newscaster closes this whole thing off about these, you know, people believing in the Savior. She says, and that's the story of the not so wise men who followed the star. Get it? Wink. Right. Just in case the first two reveals <laughs> didn't do it for you. Also, they're so fucking stupid that they couldn't get a third wise man in their movie. The three people, one of them is the star. Right. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Fucking well, because nonsense. there's two chicken farmers. But like those the, are the we'll farmers. That's we'll, a different thing. That's not that even we'll, the wise men. So. We'll get to it. Anyways, <laughs> now the devil's going to speak to him through a tasteless owl figurine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love to. They show him like angrily drink a thimble full of gin. This of tiny apple ass, juice. Tiny ass little yeah. bit of alcohol. It's like, no, man, you don't do that when you're pissed. <laughs> Like, did the test audience get mad when he poured a full ounce of that <laughs> fake whiskey? And they were like, whoa, whoa. Wasteful. Whoa. A finger of whiskey in this movie? This is on Pure Flix. So, yeah, but Satan starts talking to him, telling him that the baby will overthrow him, which seems unlikely. I don't think he'd hold the prime ministership that long, would he? But. Right. And they they (laughs) switch halfway through the Satan talking to him that it's him talking. So it's like it's like if Smeagol and Gollum were both Gollum. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Right. (laughs) He goes, I can't stop a child from being born. And I'm like, must be a fucking conservative. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's like if Smeagol and Gollum. We're both Gollum and then Gollum and Gollum decided to abort all the fetuses in the UK because they're an atheist trying to kill, do a modern version of killing all the babies like Herod did. Right. Mm-hmm. But they, they don't go there with this. No, I they, for sure. That's where they were going with it. Yeah. Yeah. So did I. But no, apparently they weren't even going to mention fucking abortion in this movie. Um, So Herod, because I guess he's he's pro-life or something, decides that he has to wait until the baby's born before he kills it. And there's this great moment between him and, I guess, himself where he's like, I'm helpless against this child. And him slash Satan is like, seriously, you can't think of anything (laughs) you can do to a a baby? Have you read the Mayo Guide, dude? The whole (laughs) first three chapters are shit that kills it. Like, there's a (laughs) constantly, they can't have a blanket. A blanket will kill it. (laughs) You can't blink while you're bathing it. It's fucking insane. (laughs) Shake it. Apparently that kills it right there on the spot. Everyone <laughs> keeps telling me shaking it's the best way to kill a baby. I'm telling you, man. I got 12 pamphlets here with your guide to killing this baby. You just get lucky with SIDS. There's a lot of stuff. You could nothing. <laughs> All right. So now the three wise men, the two wise, per- the star, and the, the, those other characters have been summoned by the PM to the diner that would let him shoot the the finest hotel lobby they could get permission to shoot in at 1 p.m. Oh, God. <laughs> this day's in. Yeah. You have exactly one take. Don't worry. We've only used one take for the rest of this movie. Yeah. Oh, all right. Fantastic. <laughs> would you like to buy breakfast with your hotel stay? It's terrible. No, we don't want breakfast with our hotel stay. <laughs> and it's four people meeting up at this terrible lobby of a Waffle House or whatever (laughs) London's version of that is. And they all uh, didn't think this out. And they were like, I guess we shake hands, right? When the four of us meet. (laughs) But they don't. 
there's just like how oh, how many money should all of us shake it? Just okay, just the one pairing that's gonna shake hands. We're gonna start. Yeah. To see, we're gonna start seeing now. One take. Got it. Okay. <laughs> We've met the two of us. One permutation. That's Hello. It. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and basically the prime minister's pitch here is hey, no hard feelings. I just really would like to meet the baby. And they're like, really? You don't hate the baby? And he's like, what? I hate the ba- what? No, I wanna I wanna okay. give him an edible. Arrangement. <laughs> Edible. You said that weird, though. Do you guys hear him say that weird? Right? He said, no. Hello? Say, say, I'd like to meet the Savior again. Just say I'd it right like here. to meet the Savior. <laughs> when are you doing like, a Mario thing? <laughs> Wait, are you the bad guy from Ratatouille now? Hold on a second. <laughs> and Well, until Tyler's there, and he's like, you know, he's like, well, excuse me, sir, but didn't you just say yesterday, fuck that baby with a coat hanger? I have it on tape. And he's like, no. Yesterday. No, I have a <laughs> very non-creepy reason to demand to see a baby. I have yeah. normal reasons. I've changed my mind. So if you could tell me exactly where that fetus is. Like GPS wise, yeah. longitude and latitude. That's yeah, what he says. right. <laughs> the exact location of that fetus is what I will need now. Is the information, please? Thank you. Look, I just want the typical information. Where are you registered? What window would be best to snipe the baby? Yeah, from? right. The basic <laughs> stuff, you know. Did you guys hear it that time? I heard him. He said snipe, right? <laughs> well, and what's great is he he says like, oh, I want to give the baby a gift. And I, I do not believe this was scripted. The billionaire character screams so hard it kisses the mic out. He's like, I am giving the baby money. I had dibs on money, baby, baby money. Yeah. Has <laughs> anyone called frankincense? Yes, we have a frankincense guy and a myrrh guy. They couldn't make it because we're filming on a Saturday, but we do have them. They'll be in the credits. Candle show. I bring licorice. <laughs> Nobody likes licorice. Black licorice. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Get out. <laughs> and then we cut to a chicken house. Why? Chicken factory. Because their friend worked at a chicken house and so they could film at the chicken house on Saturday <laughs> after 7 p.m. Oh, I was so confused by this. I was like, how are they going to fit this into the Bible story? Eggs are from. Hold on. Easter. I got this. Wait. Easter eggs, the resurrection of Jesus. No. Okay. No. And the best part is that, like, the two people playing the characters in this chicken factory are, without a doubt, I promise and would bet any amount of money on it, people who already work in that chicken factory. Oh, yeah. The real owners of this chicken factory. Yeah. And married couple. Yes. Yeah. And and they're, they've got the 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 Guy Ritchie accent from before that we were talking about. They're those people. So and of course this is like in the Bible the the the, the angel showed up to the farmers to tell them, hey man, Savior's being born right over there. If you want to go in and uh, get a peek, so they're the stand-in for those characters. So the guy walks out to get some stuff outside, and there's a army of naked dudes with torches outside. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And they're just like, yeah, don't be afraid. Um, we're just here to tell you about the Messiah coming back, just you guys specifically. <laughs> and he's like, okay. Um, and you need eggs in bulk. Yeah, for that? right. What's, what's <laughs> fucking happening. Right? No, no, we were, uh, we were hoping we're doing we could, all uh... the occupations alphabetically. We're on C <laughs> for chicken farmer now. Uh, Is that the term for that, by the way? Having an like egg factory, poultry. Farm, chicken farm. Ch- Ch- they have chicken- an egg factory. They have an egg making facility. Yeah, is chicken that? house is what I've always heard. But yeah. chicken house. Okay, yeah. a rookery. Um. Okay. Wait. Really? No, I made that up. Okay, you just made up a word. <laughs> I don't know. Not, if no one doesn't know it, I make it up. That's the rule. <laughs> a rookery is a breeding colony of rooks, tr- typically seen as a collection of nests high in a clump of trees. So actually, you're fairly close, man. Yeah, hey, see, there's yeah. something knocking around in the old brain and Rooney. No, it wasn't though, because no. that has nothing to do with what we're talking. It's just a, it is a bird related thing. That's hey, yeah, I got as, I got a yeah. bird word out at a moment. I'm pretty go. proud of me. <laughs> you were anyway. trying to think of a bird word and you said rookery. Rookery. Okay. He's trying to think of a bird word you didn't know though, so that worked. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All right. have you not uh, already heard? So <laughs> <laughs> certain revelation. Noah, please insert right. 33 minutes of silence after <laughs> you not already heard. And then just, then just hit the theme music. We don't need the rest of this episode. 
three minutes. Anna, bird is the word. So, all right, yeah, but so the angels are just there to make sure the chicken farmers know what's up. And they're like, but we're just chicken, simple chicken farmers. And they're like, yeah, it doesn't really fucking matter. Meanwhile, Mary's nine months pregnant. They're going to go on his moped after all. So the moped to his hometown, we, we represent the long trip they take, by the way, with, I shit you not, a black screen with an audio montage of driving sounds. Yep. God, you'd be crazy surprised that pregnant lady on moped doesn't come up in this free stock footage thing we've been using. I was really disappointed. Um, however, Dave has volunteered to go for a comically long amount of time. Do we want to go with that? I love to. So now we get a scene where they show up to rent a room. They got to be turned away or whatever. And they're like, can we rent a room? And the guy's like, no, because this is obviously just someone's house so, you, not just someone's <laughs> house this is someone's house who's not involved in the movie like you got lucky <laughs> that at your fourth house i didn't say what's with the camera <laughs> I, I mean but what they can't find the outside of a hotel that they could use they used the lobby earlier they, right, they yes. lost that negotiation. They were like, and then we'd like to use your front desk. Go, oh, oh fuck ourselves. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, well, lobby's fine. Lobby's fine. On that one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Waffle House was like, you can have your baby in dry storage. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, and then, okay, so yeah, now we have to have the modern day equivalent of getting stuck with, uh, you know, the barn out back. So the guy's like, hey, you know what? I've got an old RV in the back that you can stay in. And I'm I just like, I'm trying to fathom the privilege of looking at sure use my rv which is small but has its own private bathroom and kitchenette as more or less analogous to sleeping in a barn right <laughs> yeah well again because they can't be like oh no where will we have this baby because the answer is any hospital because medicine is free yeah right yeah. <laughs> well, right, right, because then she starts pregnanting and he says, oh, I'll take you to the hospital. She says, there won't be enough time. And it's like, but you just, just now your water broke. Why would there not be enough time? Nope, nope. This baby's coming out like one of Eli's shits. It's now or now. <laughs> <laughs> now we're, It's now or now it's with out. pants on. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> we are selling it's now or now with pants on t-shirts on our website now. <laughs> like a... It's now or now. It's all proceeds go to IBS sufferers. <laughs> it's me. Also, okay, wait, I love this so much. We cut back to the farmers and they're like, well, I guess we'll go see the savior being born, but they're going to go on their tractor because farmers drive tractors. <laughs> Just, you I, know, I, to town. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted so badly a cut of them moving at three miles an hour. Yes. Right. This is a farm tool. It's not a... <laughs> It's not a vehicle. I mean, it's a vehicle, but that's not what it is. <laughs> not primarily, yes. And what are they What are they tilling with the... Tr they're tilling chickens? They're picking up eggs in the tractor? <laughs> what the fuck's happening with that tractor? Giant John Deere tractor. It, no reason for that to be there. So, yeah, so then we get this amazing driving montage. I can't possibly do this driving montage justice because it's like a half second at a time, and it'll like go from one guy's road view to another guy's road view, but we don't even know whose roads these you are. You catch the whatever. other cameraman running towards the front <laughs> <Yeah>. shot <laughs> as you're watching the back shot. It's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slow down your track. Uh, and then, by the way, after <laughs> all of this setup for the following the star to find the savior and shit, they all go in the same fucking car. Right, so she they don't, they don't even follow her in the end. <laughs> they're yeah. down. And there's, a, there's a billionaire in this car. The billionaire <laughs> couldn't spring for a fucking Uber XL to fit the extra the ba a minivan with a back row of seats. I'll, I'll tell you what. Why don't we both order an Uber pool? Sometimes they put us together. Oh nope, separate ones. <laughs> Bruh. It's I'm going to check Lyft, see if they have better prices sometimes. <laughs> uh, I don't like I'm Lyft. Billionaire. I feel like they have more power in there. I don't like it. So, Deleting it from my phone. Do you have a mer guy? Call <laughs> your mer guy. So now, and okay, so now everybody has to show up at the RV, so they all just 
walk into this random RV without knocking. We are never given any reason to understand, like, why they know where to go. No. Or anything. They walk in and they and then all actors simultaneously realize, oh, this RV is too small to do a scene in. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We also we also get this amazing scene of the prime minister's baby assassins who show up, (laughs) but the door is locked so they can't get in. You know, the Mandalorian must have got there first. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the, the two henchmen who yes. are clearly going to a job interview to to become like higher level henchmen yeah. for a different henchman <laughs> operation. I'm going to be a hench manager. Look, man, I'm only going to be able to hench for this guy for a while. He's going to die of a heart attack before this movie's out. So uh, I, gotta, I keep my resumes out there. <laughs> How does one hench? Is that a verb to hench? Well, this is not how to hedge here. This is an example no, of how fail not at to hedge because yeah. they fail okay. miserably. But yeah, and then the farmers show up also where the baby was born to serve no goddamn purpose in the story whatsoever. Right? There was nope. just there were farmers in the Bible, so they have to have a couple of farmers there too. Mm-hmm. And maybe the billionaire shows up a few days ahead and gets a fucking hospital room <laughs> instead of a trailer. <laughs> No. What are you doing? Maybe, yeah. Maybe you hunt them up before the baby's born, even. Right? Since Do you a can little magically... prenatal care? Fuck. Yeah. All right. So th- then the, the fucking na- uh, narrator cuts in to assure us that, no, that's they couldn't afford to film any more. Like, they couldn't do the whole part where Jesus does the Jesus stuff. We're done now. We're done. <laughs> but I assure you, he was great. And our handsome friend, Dave said we could film him walking for this last shot. He so. even grew a beard, y'all. He spent <laughs> like three days not shaving for this shot. So. Enjoy Dave. Also, so there's this long fucking narration at the end, and we just have to see everybody sitting around like enjoying the baby. Adorable baby, by the way. So often in these movies, they get ugly babies. Everybody in this movie was cute. But they, they're they sitting around with the baby, and so very clearly the farmer dude is flirting with the actor that plays Ruby Graceland. And it's not like in the movie. It's definitely this actor just flirting with this other actor. Yep, just striking out. Yeah. Oh, that like 14 foot tall guy. Yeah. The, the, yeah. He yeah. was enormous. Again, was the, the I think the entire I can't, height of the door. I can't tell if it's just the aspect ratio or if he was that tall. I can't <laughs> well, they shot it in Hobbiton. You never know. Never <laughs> yeah, know. Right. Right. Yeah. Also, we, we watch uh, the billionaire come millionaire. Give Mary a check. Uh, so there's, <laughs> and, and you can tell they're trying to do the like gold incense and myrrh moment here, but he's just like, here's a piece of paper. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I should have put it in a chest. And anyway. keep in mind, right? Like there's no words that, a, so, uh, that accompany this. So like, there's no reason for her not to think that this stranger that just showed up is trying to buy her baby for that amount. Right. right? Like he's just <laughs> sliding a piece of paper across the table to her here. Right. Sorry, my old supplier killed himself, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I miss Jeff. I miss him every day. <laughs> Shouldn't have brought Hillary into the... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it goes like, uh, you, the narrator goes, but the story doesn't end here. This is just as much of our script as we could afford to actually do. We thought it was going to be free because we were doing it on the phone, but then it turned out like, getting everybody together on the same day was a pain in the ass. So that's it. But, you know, Jesus got murdered later for stuff and everything. Anyway. Yeah. That's the end of the movie. And that's the end of the movie. (laughs) With that long, weird narration thing, like with the cranberries doing slam poetry (laughs) on the top of the thing. (laughs) I was just like, all right, come on, just play Donovan Atlantis. Let's go. That's (laughs) enough of the weird... Irishy voiceover thing. Let's go. Just end your fucking movie. Yeah. All right. So that's the end of the movie. And I have to ask who told it better, this movie or Linus? Ooh. I'm going to go uh, <laughs> Linus because he told it faster. Well, that's true. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. That's that's this movie as a noise. Yeah. So whatever that means, my answer is. And that the farmer characters did just go wah, 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 when they talked and they were adults. So, I love, yeah, I love when they showed up and they're just like, we're chicken farmers <laughs> that are here now. We so know. That's all sorted out. 
Carry on with the Messiah, the salvation of humanity. Now that you I guess. have chicken farmers, yeah. You guys need a couple dozen. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Savior, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still have more Tuesdays to account for. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, it's Christmas tacular season, which means we'll be taking on the 1959 flop tacular Santa Claus. Oh, finally. Santa. Yep, Santa versus Satan in a child kidnapping sing-along contest. Get ready. Oh, Oh, I'm so excited because this is one of those ones where like movies were still really expensive and took a lot of people to make, and it's just as bad as Savior was. Yeah. Oh, Mm. awesome. All right. So with that, we're going to bring chapter one of this fucking tacular to a merciful close once again a huge thanks to all the patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among the ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash god awful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode you can also help a ton by leaving us a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoy this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scathing atheist citation data and the skeptocrat which are available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email god awful movies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of p andrew torres our theme song was written in by Ryan Slot, Nickel Beaver Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. Michael Marshall is training a ninja baby to defeat Boris Johnson in a fight <laughs> to the death. After it was clear that Joe was going to buy this whole virgin birth story, Mary got them a free upgrade on their cable. <laughs> if you enjoy Christmas Taculars, please Google how tall is Heath Enright so that it's the only thing comes up when you Google his name. a bit i don't like you (laughs) i find you objectionable here stuck with me he is an objectionable you are correct that is a correct assessment the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2019 all rights reserved